Welcome to Truth and Love Ministry International. We are so excited that you're joining us via social media. Uh, you may be um, following us on Facebook, which would be Truth and Love Ministry International, as well as Prophet Gina Guy and The Word and the Workout. Those are our Facebook pages. The website is tnlmi.org. You can follow us on Instagram at Truth and Love Ministry International and Twitter as well. So we're excited to invite you all to the ministry today, as well as all of the um, saints that are here present. We're excited because today is Pentecost Sunday. I'm not going to be actually teaching on that today, but I want you to understand the significance of Pentecost Sunday. We understand that Pentecost Sunday follows 50 days after what the world calls Easter. And it's interesting, we've got Easter celebrations, we've got Christmas celebrations but the world does not recognize Pentecost Sunday, which is sad because Pentecost Sunday ushers in the two things, you guys, a harvest and revelation. So you're here today on Pentecost Sunday. You need to understand it's a new season for you. Pentecost Sunday is always about a new season. The Holy Spirit fell on the church. Um, this was 10 days after Jesus ascended. He had died, rose again, showed himself to his disciples, and then... Ten days later, he ascended, and that's when the church received the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, so it's exciting because that is the day that we are in today, and your harvest is getting ready to be reaped. And I'm going to explain some scripture today, where what I feel like God gave me to teach you. And the title of this message is Glory After the Suffering. If that does not excite you, I don't know what will. Has anybody here suffered? Yes or no? Anybody, any kind of suffering? All right. A few times in our lives, right? Some of us are in our 20s, 30s, 40s, and we have done some suffering. But the exciting thing is there is glory after that suffering. And I'm going to explain the difference between the anointing and the difference between the glory. And if that doesn't help you push through what you're going through right now, I don't know what will. Amen? So let's go ahead and write some scriptures down. It's awesome to receive the word from a minister, from a teacher. But it's so important to get in the word yourself. And to study everything that I say and go back to the word and make sure it's scriptural, okay? Because you can get some clips on Instagram, you can get some clips on Facebook, and things can be taken out of context, right? So we want to make sure that everything's contextual, you're reading it in the scripture, and you're applying it to your own life. So we're going to study mainly out of Romans 8, 18 through 30. Acts 2, 1 through 13, and Joel 2 are the scriptures on Pentecost. So if you want to read what all that was about and how the Holy Spirit descended upon the church, it's scriptural, it's in the New Testament, that's what you want to read. So again, Romans 8, 18 through 30, and we're going to backtrack just a few verses of what precedes that in Romans 7, 14 through 17. Again, this message is called Glory After the Suffering. So you guys ready to dig into this? Yep. Amen, amen. So let's do it. All right. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you've got a pen ready. This is not for your entertainment. This is um, a now word to, to go into your spirit. So you want to have a pen. You want to start writing because there may be some things that are really going to apply to you and other things that will apply to someone else. So make sure you've got a pen and you've got this so you can study it after you're done watching. All right. In verse 12, we start, Therefore, brethren, we are to live not according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we're children of God, we're heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, and indeed we suffer with him, we may also be glorified with him. Okay, you're like, well, that was a lot. What does all that mean? We're going to break this down right now to understand. Because before I get into the sufferings leading to glory, we still need to understand who we are, right? All right, the only way we're going to get through suffering is if we understand that there's a purpose for it, right? So many of us here with Truth and Love Ministry, we're also involved in the Word and the Workout. So a lot of us are trainers. We're all, a lot of us are focused on health. So that's a good place to start because if you go into the gym and you have a training program, right, you understand that you're going to suffer. No? Right? You're going to do a little bit of suffering. You got a leg day. You know it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. But why do you do it? 
Why do you press through halfway through the workout when you want to give up? Why? You know you're going to get results and you know you're going to get stronger, correct? Yes. So what happens if we are believers and we're going through suffering? Spoke with somebody today that contacted the ministry. I just lost my car. Um, I, well, first of all, I, I can't drive to your ministry because I have no gas money. I'm about ready to lose my car. I have no insurance. Um, there's no work. There's suffering, right? She then stated, I, I want to give up. I don't think I can do this anymore. They're calling front line leaders, soldiers, because as soldiers, we've been through the boot camp. We know what it takes to get through, right? There's people in the body of the Christ that need this kind of ministry to help them get through. Just as you need a trainer sometimes because you may give up three sets in because you're in so much pain, you're tired and you're going to walk away, right? What happens? How, how do you end up pressing through? You usually have a trainer or you've got accountability, somebody with you, right? Am I lying or is that truly how it goes, right? Do you tend to give up when you're by yourself more than you uh, will press through with somebody who's with you, right? You can make some noise in this room, right? That's right. So what happens is, is if we understand what did I just read, let's back up now. Listen, you're going to be led by the flesh, meaning I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I can't do this, the fight is too much, I'm losing everything. The flesh will always tell you to give up. But how do we live according to the spirit? The spirit has to rule over the flesh. We hear that over and over, but there are steps to get there, right? The flesh wants to give up. The spirit is always stronger than the flesh. But listen, what did, what is verse 14 said? As many are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. Anybody listening right now, raise your hand to me. Give me a hallelujah on online here. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ. Yes or no? I can't hear you. Yes. 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 If you have, are you a son of God? Yes. yes. All right. So you belong to Jesus Christ, right? We are now sons of God. Right now, I'm going to take a step right now and stop because there are people that are listening right now that have not given their lives to the Lord and you're struggling, your marriages, your finances, your body, and you want to give up. You will give up. Absolutely, you will give up because you're not accountable to someone that's stronger than you, someone that has conquered sin and conquered death. And the only one that's conquered that is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can empower you to press through. You may say, well, I've done it pretty well on my own for some time. That's fine. Your fuel will, will run out. At some point, the pressure will become so difficult in this lifetime, in this world, that you will give up. And the only way you will not is if you give your life over to Jesus Christ. If you go also to the website on tnlmi.org, tnlmi.org, you can click on what is salvation. And I give a teaching on giving your life to the Lord and getting filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of power. Okay? So after we pray, please go to the website. If you've given your life to the Lord through this teaching today, I'd like you to contact the ministry so that we can pray for you and cover you. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that are listening and that are getting ready to hear the message on suffering and the outcome being the glory of God in your life, until they can receive the sonship of Jesus Christ, they will not be able to make it through. So I empower you right now in the name of Jesus, you will make it through because right now you are turning your life over to Jesus. Just speak with me and say, Jesus, I give my life to you. I cannot clean myself up. I cannot fix myself up, but I can come to you broken, wounded, with anxiety, with depression, with addiction, with sadness. And I know that if I come to you just as I am, you're the one that fixes me. I don't fix myself first. The power is in the blood of Jesus Christ. So I surrender my life now only by faith, not by what I see. I don't feel anything different. I don't know anything different, but I'm trusting that if I give my life to you, you will empower me to make it through this life. Not only make it through, but with abundance and life and joy. So we surrender now to you, Jesus, and I bind and rebuke every demonic spirit that's tried to take you down from the third and the fourth generation, every curse that's over your life. I break it now in Jesus' name and now receive the adoption into the family of Jesus Christ. It is new blood now, non-contaminated, new DNA. You just got a blood transfusion. You're going to think differently, feel differently, live differently, because now I empower you in the Holy Ghost to receive the power of the Holy Spirit right now 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. All right, so we just know some people out there just got saved. Now we can go on because now that you are led by the Spirit of God, you understand that if you gave your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit now lives in you. Amen? Listen, you did not just now receive a spirit of bondage to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Father. When you come into the family of Jesus Christ, we are now adopted. The spirit of adoption. We are now adopted into the family of Christ. And now that you understand that the spirit of God himself will bear witness that you are a child of God. Why am I teaching this before we get into Romans 8? Because you have to understand that you now are a child of God. And if you do understand who your father is, you can now walk into and become an heir. Listen, we can't become an heir of the things of Christ and the things that Jesus died for us. It, you can't come into that, what he's given you, by any other avenue, right? You have to come in through Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, the life. He's the only door. So now that you understand who you really are, that you're a child of God and you're an heir, let me explain what an heir is. If this does not make your spirit leap, because you've given your life to Jesus, either right now or at some point in the past, you now have the right to inherit everything that God owns. Oh my. Okay. Everything. He owns all the property on earth, right? Right? He owns everything on this earth. He gave you life. You do not have to operate in fear anymore. You do not have to operate in anxiety and all of these different things, you guys. Listen, you are an heir and everything that God created on this earth, he gave Adam dominion over. Why as believers are we not taking dominion? Because we don't believe that we've inherited anything. We, we don't think any of this belongs. No, we should just work, you know, for $5 an hour. That's about all I'm worth. But that's okay. I, I accept that. Okay, well, accept that. That's fine. But I know that Jesus absolutely owns everything on this entire earth. Death has no, no reign over your life. Death over your vision. Death over your promises. Death over your children. Death over your relationships. Death over your mind. Do you understand that? This is why I'm teaching on, on those last three verses in Romans 7. Because if you understand that you're a child of God, listen, if you go out on the, your children go out to school or on the playground and somebody bullies them and, or whatever, what's the first thing to say? Well, I'm going to tell my dad, you know, if they're little, right? I'm going to tell my dad. Oh my, because you know, your daddy is going to come handle business, right? Do you understand that your daddy is going to come handle business for you? But your daddy is not going to come handle business unless you ask him to, right? So if you understand that you are a child of God and you're an heir, do you understand you're an heir, right? And this, this is what I love. Do you understand that an heir cannot legally, you can't legally take over what's been left to you unless someone prior to you is deceased? Do you hear what I just said? Okay. I can say that I'm an heir to a huge fortune, right? This huge legacy that my parents left me, um, you know, I, I, but I cannot take um, authority or take action or put my hands on that until my parents, what? Pass away and it's handed to me. Are you getting it? Do you understand that Jesus died for you? That already took place. You already are an heir. Why do you think, why are we living bankrupt lives? Why are we living as a people as if we have no hope? Hope will, Without hope, you'll always be disappointed. And the body of Christ is very disappointed. They're very discouraged. Are we not? There's a lot of discouragement in the body of Christ. But if we understand who we are, that's why I said first, you're children of the king. You're a child of God. All right, which means what? You're an heir. Okay, an heir to what? What do I get? Well, I get that everything, I get everything that Jesus died for. What did he die for? Well, I don't know. I guess we should read the word, right? I guess we should read the word and find out what we can possess in Christ. All our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our successes, our joy, our peace, our patience, our kindness, all the fruits of the spirit belong to us. But why are we not accessing them? We really don't know who we are yet. And we need to come to understand who we are sufferings and trials take the body of Christ out. 
Do you understand if you're facing a trial or you're facing suffering, it's only to take you to the next step, right? What did the last verse in chapter seven say? We are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share in his glory. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to camp right there before we go in, in, into the message. When the suffering comes, this is when many people fall out. This is why not everybody is in boot camp. Not everyone's a Navy SEAL, right? <laughs> okay. Because only it's going to take a certain mentality to really get on the front lines and go after what God has for you. If you come to this ministry and you're listening to this ministry and you're listening to this message right now, we are a frontline ministry. We are not seeker sensitive. We're not t ear tickling ministry. I'm accountable to speak what God tells me to speak, but it is called truth in love because I'll speak the truth, but always in love. Amen. It's a kindness of the Lord that leads to repentance. What does that mean? If we focus on people's, uh, on the body of Christ or anybody, the remnant, we focus on their strengths and pull up their giftedness and what they're good at and what they're successful at, then the weaknesses will always make their way out. You always want to focus on what someone is good at and what someone is strong at. And that's what this ministry does. We're going to pull out the good things that God's called you to do. And the other things will just be a shadow and pass away and you'll get stronger and stronger and stronger. But listen, we have to suffer with him in order to be glorified. So everyone now wants you to really stop and think about what are the areas that you truly have suffered in? You truly feel like, I, I don't know if I can get out of this. The very weapon that the enemy is using against you is the area that God's getting ready to bless you in. I'm going to say it again. If your joy and your hope and your mind, the enemy has come after that, and you feel like you can't make it, I'm going to tell you right now, that's what God's getting ready to bless you in. He is getting ready to empower you with hope that's going to defer, that's going to help other people right now. Do you understand that? If you feel hopeless, I'm so excited that you're listening to this because there's a mandate of hope on my life. Everything that can be stripped has been stripped, and this is the third stripping that I've gone through. I didn't think it'd go any deeper, but those closest to you will strip things from you and walk away from you. But that just means that God's getting ready to take you to the next level, which is why I'm going to get ready to teach on the glory. And the suffering is going to lead you into a new level, a new anointing. Amen. Now, sometimes we suffer because of our own doing. So, all right. And that's okay. So before I get into this, I'm going to share a little bit on that. A lot of times I hear in church, oh, praise God, you know, people are against me and they're talking bad about me. So praise God. I, that means I'm doing everything right. And okay, we need to be balanced here, right? One of the things I always teach is always go before the Lord and always ask, is there any truth in what someone's saying? They may say something that's totally whacked. All right. And that will cause you to go, oh, they're so whacked. I'm not going to listen to that. Okay. In that, I mean, I, I had an accusation recently. It was so whacked that I almost took the letter and put a match to it. It's so whacked. <laughs> like it's so not true. So demonic. But in it, and someone was with me, and they will attest to this. I got on my face before God, and I wept. And I said, is there any truth in what's being spoken? Any truth in this three-page letter? And I searched my heart and searched my heart for three days, and God said, absolutely not. And I said, okay. And, of course, my spiritual covering confirmed that as well. All right, because we are covered by spiritual pastors. that were, We have mom and dad, and, you know, you got to be covered. So I was just told to walk very gently how I handled it because you can handle it wrong. And now you do have accountability, right? All right. So if everybody's following me, you guys got that? So whatever you're suffering right now, you know, you could be suffering financially and be blaming that on the enemy. But maybe you get your paycheck and you start spending it and you didn't budget your bills. And now you don't have enough money to pay what you need to pay. We can blame the devil or you can blame your own self for not having a budget. Let's not be stupid. We need to be wise. Everyone's praying, I want a million dollars. I want a million dollars. I want God to bless me. I want property. But you can't even vacuum your own house, right? All right, come on now. You can't take care of what God gave you. 
everything's falling apart, but and you want a million dollars, but you can't handle the five dollars he gave you, and you're not even tithing. Okay, so get what I'm saying? So I have to speak in truth, in love, before I can get into the great things that that God wants to hand us. So that needs to be balanced when you're teaching on finances or gifts in the spirit. Everybody wants gifts, but wait, are you going to do it with love or are you going to blow the body of Christ away? All right. So maybe that's why we haven't been empowered to the next level because maybe our character can't handle it yet. Making sense? Everybody's with me on that? Okay. So spend enough time on that. So you do understand that you're an heir to Christ. He already died for you. So in order to have uh, to become an heir to any kind of, when I say fortune, it doesn't necessarily be, mean money. To become an heir, someone has to pass away. Did Buddha pass away yet? But he didn't raise from the dead, did he? See what I mean? We got one God, one, one way. Jesus Christ, he died for your sin. He rose from the dead. You are now an heir of Christ. So those who just gave their lives to the Lord, it's a done deal. So if you've made these mistakes that we've talked about and you're suffering today because of, you know, a lack of wisdom, you need to forgive yourself. And now you need to apply wisdom to that area and move on. Do you know God can in one day change the whole situation? With your own children, do you do that with your children? You can spend a week, sorry, you can't go out. Nope, you can't go to the beach with your friends. Can't do it because you didn't get this lesson. You didn't get it. And then one second they come to you and say, I got it. I just figured it out. I am so sorry. I realize what you're saying is I'm making bad decisions when I'm with these people. And I should have called you when the bad situation put me in a even worse situation. And their light came on, right? What do you do to your child? Okay, go, 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 go have fun. That whole week of in time out just changed in a second. That's what God can do. But if we hold on to blame, fear, anxiety, condemnation from, from the past, and I must be camping out here because this obviously is going to mean something to someone. This wasn't an area I was going to stay in. But if you hold on to those things, you will not inherit the promises of your destiny that God has for you for 2014. Why? Because God can't hand you that thing you're asking for because you're still holding on to the past. You're looking into the rearview mirror. You're holding on to condemnation, shame, and guilt. And all it's going to do is quench what God wants to give you in the future. Right? So maybe that's why we haven't walked into it. Making sense? All right. But now that we understand that we're not in the spirit of, we don't, we didn't receive bondage. We received, um, freedom in Jesus Christ. Right. All right. Ready to get into Romans eight. We camped a little bit there, but I think that's going to make sense to a lot of people in verse 18 for, I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's about, listen, about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and to be revealed in us. There's a lot in that one verse. I'm going to stay right there for a second. If you have trouble, not everybody's a Bible scholar and all that. Listen, that's fine. If you read the Bible and you just, I'm going to read the one chapter a day. What good is that? If you didn't understand what you read, that's a spirit of religion. Listen, Again, I'm going on rabbit trails because I know there's a lot of people going to hear this message and it's going to set you free. Just open up your Bible and read. And when you get stuck on a verse, and you're like, what did that mean? You just keep going? No, no. Go back and stay there until you get it. Right? Wouldn't you rather get one verse than read a chapter and say, I read the chapter, but you don't have a clue what you just read? So I just gave you one-on-one -on, -one on how to study the word. I see smiles. So that obviously just made sense, right? So we're going to go back and we're going to apply this to what this, <laughs> I know I can feel it. I love it. It's just religion ties you up, but the Holy Spirit gives you freedom. So I'd rather study verse 18 for a week and figure this out because what did it just say? You guys, the, if I, I, I'm going to go into the amplified on, on something in verse 18, but what of that? But what of that? And I stopped there when I read that this morning, but what of that? Well, wait, but what of what? Obviously, they're speaking about some, a verse that preceded verse 18, right? Well, let, okay, let's see what preceded, but what of that? Verse 17 again. And if we're children, his children, then we're heirs. Okay, we're fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance. 
only we must share his suffering if we are to share in his glory. Verse 18, but what of that? But what of that? I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth being compared with the glory that's about to be revealed. Listen, if you understand who you are in Christ, right? That's why we read the preceding verse. If you understand you're a child of God, you're a son of God, but what of that? Yeah, what of that? You're going to go into time out. You're going to have trials. You're going to have suffering. Churches aren't teaching this. We're teaching that you should feel good. I even saw a sign in the city on a church that said the feel good church. I wanted to kick it down. It has thousands and thousands of members. I don't want to feel good. I don't want to feel good church, right? I want to know that my sufferings are for a reason. Why am I suffering? Teach me why I'm suffering. So when I leave this place, I'm still going to suffer until this particular trial is over. But now I understand that there is going to be something revealed in me when this suffering ends. Who wants to suffer now? Okay, is anybody going to raise their hand? I will. All right, okay, I heard a moan. Uh, that's <laughs> honest. That is honest. Okay, it's honest. I've got now I got the little goosey bumpies going on. Because listen, it's a presence of God confirming right now. He's saying, My child, you're gonna suffer. You will suffer. Stop listening to ministers that say you're not gonna suffer. Stop listening to ministers that say you're not gonna be able to pay your bills for you are not going to be able to pay them for a season. You are gonna suffer for a little bit. But I'm trying to get something to you. So it can get in you, so it can get through you. Write that down. I'm so, trying to get something to you so it can get in you, so it can get through you. Are we not carriers of his presence? Yes or no? Then the only way we can get anything to anybody is we have to go through something. Amen? In the very last trial that I went through in this ministry, I was like, hooray, hooray. Thank you, Jesus, for this is one of the most massive hits this ministry has ever taken. Thank you, Lord, because I've been doing this long enough to understand that I'm getting ready to go into another dimension for the nations, for God's people. I could have put the covers over my, oh, wise me. I'm not making fun of anybody doing that. I'm asking you to take the covers off of yourself right now. Expose your face to the body of Christ and say, I'm suffering. Somebody help me understand why. And the ones that are going to help you understand why are the ones who have been through it. Okay. Making sense so far? So listen. The, so you're, this present life, is anybody right now suffering from something? Whether it's something someone's done to you or it's a situation that you're in that you did to yourself, or it's just completely demonic. Okay, if that's the case, there's a reason. And this is going to be a word for somebody, and you're going to love me or hate me, but that's okay. It's your assignment. Don't abandon your assignment. If you're in the middle of something, maybe you've been assigned to it. Why are we running from people, things, places, people, Places or things. Why? I feel the anointing so strong right now. I don't know if anybody else does. Listen, you have been given an assignment. Oh, so you want to leave your job because your boss is really mean to you and doesn't appreciate you? That's pretty self-centered. Maybe you were assigned to that place to bring that whole corporation to Christ or the boss or the person you're working with. Oh, you're suffering. I'm sorry to hear that. Wait, wait. You're an heir. You're supposed to be inheriting something. Maybe you're going to inherit that whole, that whole building. I don't know. Maybe God wants to give you the, the position of CEO of that company. Maybe he wants to make you the manager of that company. Maybe he wants to give you a raise that's beyond what you can imagine. Oh, but you don't like the way the boss is teaching you. Okay, let's bow out then. You just left your assignment because you're suffering. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're in marriages that you just can't handle. And maybe that's your assignment. Oh, I was given an assignment for 18 years I didn't abandon. 
And now I'm prepared for the bride and the groom in the nations because I didn't abandon my assignment. Right? Ah, but I'm suffering. I didn't say suffer abuse. I didn't say get beat up physically. That's not what I said. Get out if that's what's going on. But you need to stay in your assignment until God releases you from the assignment. Oh, okay. So that's going to be for someone who needs to listen to that. Amen? Because w when that assignment ends, you need to know before you and God that you played out that assignment exactly how God told you to do it. Right? Amen? Amen. Okay. So, yeah, we are going to suffer. We are. It's no fun, but we are. But I'll tell you right now, when the glory of God is revealed in you, again, what does it say? It's not worth being compared to the glory that's about to be revealed to us. So someone may say, well, that's when we see Jesus. All right. What about all the rest of the scripture? Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. Greater works shall we do than, than he did. So if we're, if we're thinking that's going to be when we get to heaven, then you're more spiritually minded than you are earthly minded. We're in this world, but we're not of it. So we still have to minister, right, to ourselves, to our family. First to ourselves, hopefully. We're not preaching to everybody else. Hopefully we're preaching to ourselves first and then to other people. And if you don't understand who you are and why you're suffering, then we'll never have that the, the, um, the victory. And then once we have the victory, then other people receive it. So we have to understand that we're suffering in this trial so that God's glory is revealed in us, right? It's first revealed to us, right? You can't give to other people what you don't get, what you don't understand. Don't you love it when people try to counsel you like they're, they try to counsel you on something, but they've never been through it or they're not even, it's just, you know what I mean? You're like, well, how do you know what I, like, you don't even wait. And it's kind of scratch your head. And, and I love it when people that aren't in their word. And you know they're not even having their quiet time, nor do they pray with their spouses, but they're going to tell you what God told them. And they're going to correct you. It's like, um, it's like, right. it's like for instance, somebody wants to like make sure that you get in shape and stuff, but they're not really that much. Oh, I like that. So one of the gentlemen here um, in our ministry just said it's kind of like a somebody that's a trainer or whatever, and they tell you how to get in shape, but they're not in shape. It's, it's true. And this is the age that we're in right now. And uh, uh, kind of to counterpart that, because there's a lot of people listening, and I'm, I like to, I'm, I'm really good at putting glasses on both viewpoints. So there also are people that are trainers that are trying to get in shape, they're working on it, and they're training people too, but they're progressing, right? So those are the things as Christians we want to understand too. We, we don't have all the answers. Uh, however, we're working towards getting better every day. So we just want to, uh, that's a good perspective. And that's very true, but we also want to think about, um, you know, some of that really is maybe not physically in shape, but they've got all their schooling, their training, their certifications, and they're working towards getting in better shape, and they're trying to get people with them. So, so that's also important to remember, right? Amen. So, so we got that right in verse 18. So the glory is about to be revealed to us. What happens in your trial if you give up? but the glory was about to be revealed to you. Oh, I know, huh? Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. How, I know, I'm telling you, I see, I, you know, I got note after note. So if we have to continue this on next Sunday, we will, because I just want to be obedient, because I feel like this is really ministering to people. Is it here? Like, are you guys getting this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if the finish line is just a, like, you're, you're running, right? And there's a little, little cleft, a little cleft right here. And all you see is the road and the little cleft. What if the finish line is right there? But your perspective is, it's probably not for another three miles around. You know what I mean? Oh, our perspective could be off, right? What if it's about to happen? I am telling you, I've ministered to countless people, people that have been with me for years, all right, years. I'll never leave you, Pastor G. Oh, my God, the vision is a mix. And they fall out. Where's this vision? When's it going to happen? Why aren't you doing it this way? Everybody's a Moses, right? There's only one Moses. He's the one that went up to the tab. He was one that went up Mount Moriah, got the tablets. He was hearing from God while everybody else was building a bunch of jewelry. They were doing cookie lee jewelry. <laughs> Just saying. I got some cute earrings. Because Moses is taking too long to get the word. So you know what? 
on a second note here to people that are listening, it's not to my group here. I'll tell you that right now, but I'm going to say this in social media. Listen, submit to your pastor, submit to your spiritual leader, quit trying to tell them what to do, quit trying to tell them what they need to change. You're the sheep. You need to pray for them. You don't tell them what to do. They have their coverings. They have their spiritual coverings that keep them protected, that keep them in line where they need to be. So there's a Moses. So you stay where you need to stay, listen to your Moses, and pray for them. David is a very good example of this. He was anointed to be king. He knew he was going to rule over Israel. He knew he was, he was a, man, a warring man. He knew he had a great call. However, Saul was still king. Saul cons consulted witches. Saul wanted to kill him. Try to take his life many times. But David never usurped authority because he knew that it was not his position to do so. So all of those who want to tell us to correct what we're teaching and give your two cents, I would just keep it in prayer. And, uh, you know, that's probably the best thing to do. Amen? Because everybody thinks they have the answer. But listen, every minister has a spiritual covering, hopefully, if you don't get one. Because, yeah, you can't be a lone ranger out there. Amen? All right, you guys, here we go. Verse 19. Verse 19, for earnest expectation of creation waits for the revealing of the sons of God. We're going to break this down. Everybody is waiting to see who's in the army of the Lord. Does anybody here feel that way? You're going through your trial and you're just like, is there anybody that can pray with me? Is there anybody that understands what I'm going through? Okay, we know this as leaders because um, the Lord has, you know, We'll be isolated because it keeps us on our face to really just go after God and hear from him. But but listen, you guys, the earth is waiting. We are the earth. There are people all around us that are watching us, waiting with eager expectation to see God in us. Are they seeing God in you? Are you walking around defeated? Okay, I'm not saying making mistakes. We are all going to make them. Even after today, I will still make them right? We're human. Thank you for the grace of God. What is the grace? It's not a get out of hell free card. The grace is empowerment to live a life of godliness. It's power. It's power. So you have to access grace. It's not just something that covered. You, you have to act, you have to go ask the Lord for grace over your situation. You'll then find new, new tools that are coming to your hands, into your mind, into your spirit to fight what you're fighting. Everybody get that? You're going to have to hear this again because these are, these are deep, these are deep understandings. Listen, whatever you're fighting, there's a tool for it. Why don't we have it? Why are we swinging through the air and just fighting and not getting anything done? We're using the wrong tools. There is a tool for you. You need to ask the Holy Spirit, what is it I need to fight this particular fight? But because we don't realize that we're sons of God and that we're heirs and that there's already been a passing and everything belongs to us now, we got all the rights to this fortune, to this legacy, right? To this abundant life, but we're living it defeated. So there's a reason. God's not a liar. So we're doing something wrong. We need to come into position, right? Come into position. So this glory is waiting to be revealed in us. For the creation was subjected, listen to this, you guys, in verse 20. Creation was subjected, that's us, you understand we're creation, right? Please don't think about a tree right now. Don't think about a rock, the flower in your garden, the rose. Creation was subjected to frustration, not because of some intentional fault on its part, on your fault, your intentional part, right? You intentionally faulted. No, no, no. Listen. But by the will of him who so subjected it with hope. Say it again. Right? That was deep. That was deep. Let's go back. This is why you don't read the Bible in 365 days. We have to go back and read this. We were subjected to frustration. Not by anything intentionally on our fault. But by the will of him, you telling me that God's allowing me to be frustrated? Wait, my father's subjecting me to this? Oh, ah, we're so quick to say the devil, the devil, the devil's doing this. Wait, what if God is allowing your frustration, allowing your, your hopelessness, 
allowing the fear, the anxiety, the debt, the poverty. What if he's allowing it to get something to us so it can get in us, eventually go through us? Wow, what a concept. If this is not life changing right now, I don't know what is because everyone I'm talking to is suffering greatly right now. There's a great suffering either on every end or one particular area of their life. What if we change the perspective now and understand that we've been subjected to this by a father who loves us? How many of us have children and we've subjected them to something because we know they're going to really get it. And if they really get it, it's going to protect them in the future. Okay. Again, as trainers, we subject our clients to a lot of torture and they walk away like, Oh my God, I can't walk. I can't. Okay. Good. Good. Cause the next time you come back to me, I can add more weight cause you're going to be stronger. Ah, that person may not come back to you. They don't want more weight added. I'm going to tell you right now, you could, this, this is free will. This life as a believer is not something that the Holy Spirit imposes on. If you gave your life to the Lord, you're saved. It's, you're saved. Okay, you're saved. That's awesome. You have a place in heaven, eternal life with Jesus Christ in light, not in darkness. Thank you, Jesus. But what about this life here? What do you want? Do you just want to skate through it? Do you just want to suffer with no outcome? with no revelation, with no tools, with no hope, with no character coming out of that, totally our choice if we want to stay in that. However, what if we access our inheritance? What if I gave you the pin number to your inheritance right now? And it's a four digit. And I said, go get it now. You can open it. It's yours. Everything that you ever needed for this life, it's in this pin code. Do you guys want to know what it is? It's a four digit. It's B, uh, is that four? B I B L E. Yeah. Oh, five. Thank you. I can't count. Well, that's the number of grace. B I B L E. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's five. It's a five digit, but, you, but you can see it. This is the answer right here. It's not man. It's not man's answer. It's the Holy Spirit revealed through the written word of God. So now you have your pen code. Now you can access. Everything from front to cover belongs to us. Oh, no, I don't think that part's for me. Okay. It's only accessed through faith, though. So if I believe that I have a PIN code, perfect. But then I got to know where the bank's at. Because a PIN code's not going to help if I don't know where to put that card in. Amen? So I have to believe that I actually have a bank that I can use this card in. So faith accesses everything. Without faith, it's impossible to believe God. It's impossible to please him. It's impossible to believe who you are in him. You've got to have faith. Amen? All right. So let's go on to the next um, verse. For, excuse me, verse 21. Nature itself will be set free from its bondage and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. Who wants out of the bondage and the decay and out of the cycle that you've been in. Who wants out? Anybody here want freedom? Okay. So what did we say? You first have to know who you are, right? You're a child of God. Second, you have to know that you're an heir. Did someone die to hand this over to me? Yes, he did. Okay. That's a done deal. You legally now, you legally now can access everything that God has for you, right? Amen. We have to understand where our help comes from. It comes from the Holy Spirit. How do you have the Holy Spirit? By accepting Jesus Christ, which everyone here has done, and hopefully everyone watching this has done. Amen? Right? All right. So now we need to understand a couple things. Let's go. It's okay. We got a baby here. Baby is always new life. Amen? This is Pentecost Sunday, new life. This is your inheritance today. Verse 22. So we're in Romans 8, verse 22. We know that the whole creation, listen to this, of irrational creatures. Can we be irrational sometimes? Oh, no. I'm so <laughs> rational all the time. All right. We know the whole creation of irrational creatures 
have been moaning together in the pains of labor until now. Well, wait, are you still feeling those labor pains? Are you still in pain? Are you still birthing? Whatever this thing is, whatever this promise God has given you, right? Listen, if we carried a child for three years, that would be pretty scary. I know I saw someone's like, that's why, listen, there's a time and a season for everything. I know, oh my God. She's like, she's not even, I've never even had a baby and I just scared me. For all of you who, who haven't had a baby, it's not three years. No, but the whole point is this. Listen, your life, your struggles, the trials, the testing, the anxiety, the depression, the poverty, the hopelessness, all of these things are to be for a season, not for a lifetime. How long have you been going through the suffering of the one thing that you have been dealing with? This is what we need to ask. You don't carry a baby for three, five, nine, twenty 20 years. What would happen to your body? It would deteriorate. What would happen to your heart? It'd become hopeless. What would happen to your mind? You'd probably lose it. Anybody that's carried a child for three months, you're like at that night, I'm ready, that's it, I'm done. The first month, like, yay, oh, how cute. The third month, oh, look at the little kicks. How fun is that? Then the eighth month, like, get this baby out. <laughs> All right? Come on now. Anybody's had babies here, you know I'm talking about. You're like, that's it. I'm done. How many of you are done? Okay. See? Amen. I don't know about you, but there's no way we are going into 2014 if anybody is, go to YouTube, you need to listen to the prophetic words and on the website, a now word on the tnlmi.org website. I post the now words. You've got to stay up on that. Um, there's other prophetic people that are, you know, spirit of the prophets or subject to the prophets. We're all in unity, hopefully most of them, on what God is doing right now. And 2014 is about stepping into your destiny. I didn't say full fat, you're going to be head deep, but 2014 is actually stepping into it. So many of us, have gone. I know for myself, it's been the past five to seven years that I've been waiting for some specific destinies in my life that God has spoken. And he said 2014 would be the stepping into it. We've in the first, first of January, I stepped into it. First of January, step right into it. So you should be stepping into those things. Now, if you're still suffering, there are some things that we got to get, we got to get to, we got to understand why this is happening. Amen. And this is what we're trying to teach right now. In verse 23, 23, not only that, but we are also to have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. There are many in the body of Christ that are literally suffering physically, physically. And there is a huge wave of health that the body of Christ is teaching. I'm amongst many, many believers that are moving in the realm of health for the body of Christ. We're all doing it the way God has told us to do it. And it's an amazing thing. I'm telling you, this is the year for the body of Christ to get healthy. I didn't say run to the altar and have the minister lay hands on your back and lay hands on your knees, even though you're hundred pounds overweight, but let's lay hands on the knees. You know, I, I don't mean to be rude or to be offensive to anyone, but what I am saying is God gives us a brain. And he wants us to use wisdom. And if you're eating fast food and putting dyes in your bodies and GMOs and sugars and all of that, and you're coming for prayer for diabetes and all these, maybe God is teaching us to eat healthy, take care of our bodies so that we can be healed from the inside out. Amen? So we need to, to pay attention to what the body of Christ is teaching right now in that area. There are plenty of voices out there teaching on this. But in verse 25, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. That word help is Greek means to join together. Listen, the body of Christ is joining together along with the Holy Spirit to help us on our weaknesses. We don't have to do this alone. If you've been isolated, maybe you've been hurt by a church by a leader and you found that you're isolating yourself. I, I'm speaking this because I know many people have come to our ministry. They're tired of the church thing. They're tired of not getting help. 
They're just tired, so they're leaving the church. This is not okay. You need to be with a church body that's teaching the word, and you're seeing the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. It's so very important, right? And don't isolate yourself. You need to understand that the Holy Spirit is helping us, joining us together so our weaknesses, the bodies to come together to help each other out. Now in verse 27, he who searches us, searches our hearts, knows that the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all these things work for the good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Now we're going to get into first, verse 29. We're going to talk a little bit. It's going to make sense why we're hooking this all together. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, that they might be the firstborn among the brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, he called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. This is a, There's a lot of teaching in the body of Christ that you already are predestined in the Lord, and whatever his will is for you, it will be. I don't know how many people have, the Lord fights the battles for you. The battle belongs to the Lord. Oh, don't worry. If you don't do that, if, if it's not God's will, it's not God's will, it won't happen. How many have heard it taught like that? Okay, that's not just not true. What did we just talk about the sufferings of the Lord? He's trying to get something in, something to us so it can get in us, so it can operate through us. So are we saying that we're already predestined in Christ and what, if I was supposed to have that job, I was supposed to have that job. If I was supposed to marry that person, I was just supposed to marry that person. Okay, how many people are divorced now? So, okay, maybe you weren't. The Bible says let no man tear apart what God put together. Listen, if it got torn apart, maybe God didn't put it together. If, okay. I'm going to speak something very clear. Let no man tear apart what God put together. If God put you two together, no man can tear apart. So maybe we put ourselves together with something and it got torn apart. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not advocating divorce. I'm, that's not what I just said. So if somebody wants to take that and run with it, that's your deal. It's not what I said. Because if you go back in this tape, I talked about not leaving your assignment. Okay? So we have to ask ourselves, did God give you that job? Did, we spoke to somebody today about something that we were doing. And it was quite interesting because I thought, well, why are you here if you weren't sure about it? it, it wait, you're doing this, but you want to maybe do this. Listen. You have to know that God told you to do what you're doing. Do you hear me? Okay, if you're suffering in your job, did God tell you to get that job? Look back and go back. Now, hopefully you prayed about it. If you didn't and you made mistakes and you just took some, okay, that's okay. You know, there's always, we always can start fresh today, right? Okay, Lord, I, I never prayed about this job. I took it. Um, now there's a lot of trouble. I'm now getting demoted. The pay okay, do you want me in this job? So remember, God's merciful. Do not condemn yourself if you didn't pray about the relationship you're in, the job you're in, the situation you're in, whatever. But however, if you are now in a situation that you're, gosh, should I take that job? Do I, do I, is that job, is that what God wants me to have? Should I take that promotion? Is this the person that God wants me to marry? Is this where my children should go to school? Now is the time to be asking the Lord to speak to you. Not once you're in it. Because guess what? Once you're in it, you're committed. And once you make that vow to that position, that job, that person, you now made that vow. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, so I'm speaking truth in all this. You may be now equally unequally yoked in the job and the relationship, but I'm sorry you made the commitment. Well, he's just not where I'm at spiritually. Well, who are you so prideful to think you, what? Did you just say that? What kind of pride makes you think you're more spiritually more lofty? Because maybe there's something in you that God's still trying to work out. Because I know in my situation, no matter how much hell it was and how much was wrong on the other side, do you know God always showed me something in myself? He always showed me something that I could work out. And I did. That's why I can stand here and say this today. So, look at your part in your relationship, in the job, your situation with your children, 
whatever it is you're doing and ask God to show you, right? Because maybe the suffering is to get something it to you, to get something in you, to get something through you. And then once it goes through you, then that assignment, you may depart from it. He may call you to depart from whatever that, it may be the job. Now go to the next one. Now I've got something greater for you because you know what? You did it. You passed the test. But we all want to move on without passing the test. Right? So the test is what? Character. I'm not talking gifts. Gifts, well, we all have gifts in this room. Every single person here. But gifts do not determine your calling in the Lord. It's your character. Your character is always going to be tested, right? Everybody get what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. So we're going to end with um, something I want to speak about that I'm seeing in this ministry. And I know that this is going to minister to individuals as well as uh, pastors and leaders and ministries. Uh, I was out with one of my, uh, my staff the other day and uh, we just happened to be in a restaurant and two pastors from the city that I know walked in out of nowhere and uh, immediately you could tell they were just beaten down. They had just been clubbed. And I walked over them and I said, listen, you're being, your ministry is being stripped, right? They said, absolutely. Everybody's walking away. I said, good, good. Because I know you two. I know your integrity. I know your character. And that thing is being stripped because those people can't go with you. They can't go into the next level of what God has for you. Right? Listen, there's something called the anointing. And there's something called the glory. And I want to speak to you on that now. Shake yourselves, pinch yourselves, wake up, whatever you got to do, because this is very, very important. When shepherds have their sheep in the field, there's something called anointing. And this is what they used to do with the sheep. The sheep would have insects or lice that would burrow in at their heads. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try not to get too prophetic here. But you do understand the head is always authority. The head is always representing authority. So the shepherd would anoint and pour oil over the sheep's head. Not, not so that the insects would die. Wouldn't that be nice if our enemy, I don't mean, God have mercy, died from us. I didn't mean die, but left us. Like just get the enemies away from us, right? But what it does is the anointing made the sheep's fur slick. So they fell off. Okay, if someone didn't get that in this room, I'll have a party all by myself. <laughs> I'll just have a little party by myself. But I know someone out there heard that. Listen, the anointing on your life, what I just taught, don't leave your assignment. Quit looking at what everybody else is wrong about. Start asking what you need to change because the greater change in character that comes through you, the greater the anointing will be. And the enemies will slide right off of your head. It is. There's always someone. The humility is extremely powerful. That's why Jesus is, is and was and is to come the most powerful man that ever walked this earth. Because not because he was the most anointed and enemies slid off of his head. It was because he was the most humble man that ever walked this earth. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Ah, oh, we hate you. We're going to cast lots for your clothes. You you know, he must be from Satan. Uh, people are going to tell you, oh, you're prophesying for money. Oh, you give prophecy because you want people to pay you. Ah, uh, everyone's going to say all kinds of stuff. Stay in the anointing. Stay in your word. Stay humble. Stay close to Jesus. Remain in the Holy Ghost. Let your sufferings, all your sufferings and all your trials get something to you so something becomes in you. Oh, don't stay there because that's selfish. Then it should come through you. If that's what hap is happening, you are walking in the anointing. The anointing is something that is poured on and rubbed on you. Okay? That's what the anointing means. So when you hear people say, oh, I feel the anointing or there's an anointing on them, it means that there's a... a the, the Lord himself has poured his oil over you and he's rubbing it on you so that you're protected from the elements of the world or your friends that betray you 
or sufferings that come into your life, you're protected from that. And those things cover your head because we are the righteousness of Christ and he's given us authority and dominion over this earth. So you're the head, not the tail, right? Read the scripture. You are the head. You're not the back end. You're the front end. So you should be walking in every room with your head up. I don't care what you're going through, what you're suffering through, what has happened to you, the hopelessness you're walking in, what you failed in. All of those things don't determine who you are. You are a child of God. That's all. That, you're a child of God. So get your head up. Walk in the anointing and let the things and the cares and the demonic things of this world literally slide off of you. What is the glory now? Now I'm going to talk about what I see happening prophetically in this time. And I know this is going to minister many people that have come out of suffering uh, that I've come out of um, and I'm out of. And it's an awesome thing to say. The glory of God is his confirmation that he is with you and in you and he's pleased with what you're doing right now. The glory of God is something that can actually be felt, right? Sometimes you don't feel the anointing. Sometimes you, sometimes you don't feel like the enemy, you know, the insects and the things of this world are sliding off of you, right? Sometimes you don't feel that. But we must know that we are anointed. We are anointed to lay hands and break the yokes off of people. We're anointed to speak the word and set people free. That's your anointing. That's your, that's your inheritance. And that will become more and more stronger the more you remain in the vine. He is the vine, we're the branch. The more we remain, the more crushing, the more oil comes out. But what happens when we have walked through such a trial and now we're standing in the presence of God? When that presence of God is with you, you will feel a heaviness. You will feel a confirmation that he is pleased with what you are doing. I'm telling you, that's what this ministry is walking in right now. We are praying for people and literally feeling the glory of God, the presence of God everywhere we're going. What does, is that biblical? How is that biblical? Didn't we just read in Romans 8 that we, this trial of our present suffering cannot even be compared to the glory that's about to be revealed in us? Did we not just read that? Amen. This is the season that we are in right now, saints of God. We are going to receive much wisdom and much revelation in this time that we are in. If you are, or if you are literally feeling that you are at the end of your rope with your situation, I pray that this message, that you understand that this, the glory that's getting ready to come, I didn't say the anointing, with the stronger the crushing and the stronger the trial, the more that you have lost, what did Jesus suffer? Has anybody suffered more than he has suffered? He, his suffering was so great. He is now glorified. He is glorified with the father, my God. But wait, are you saying that if we go through sufferings, that glory, that presence is going to be, well, didn't Paul, the apostle Paul walk in his shadow, Peter and his shadow healed people? That's the glory of God. Did Paul's handkerchief not heal people when he when they touched it? Oh my Lord. So are you saying that if we really press through with our trial and we get through the suffering, that we too may walk in that type of glory? I'm telling you, yes, it's possible. So it depends how much we want to press through, right? It's really, it's up to us because we can throw in the towel. We can quit the job. We really can. We can leave our relationships. We really can because we're tired of them. It's totally up to us. We can walk away from the presence of God and from the peace of God and just stay in hopelessness, stay in depression. We can stay there. We're going to be saved because we've given our lives to Jesus. But are you going to have the, the glory of God in your, in your very midst? Who really wants that kind of frontline ministry? I know I do. I really know I do. And remember, we asked that question prior and a few people really like, oh, good. Because what did Jesus say? Count the cost. He said, count the cost because you're going to have to pick up your cross daily. So as a ministry, we're saying count the cost. Like, don't just say, yes, Jesus, I want to do this. R yeah, I'll do it. Amen. I'll go on the front line because who watched the movie GI Jane, right? 
with what's her name? Forgot her name. Demi Moore. Great movie, right? What happened? She wanted to get into the Navy SEALs for sure. For sure. She wanted Navy SEALs, but what did it, well, already she was judged. Why? Because she was a female. She had to go against every, all the odds because she was a female. What you, it may be from your heritage. It may be the hood that you came from, <laughs> right? There may be different aspects of who you are that already people are going to prejudge you in this thing because of where you come from or your gender or your background, right? Or the money that you have or you don't have or what you drive or what you don't drive, right? You're going to be prejudged. Thank God that those are not the prerequisites. So what did G.I. Jane do? She said, that's it. I'm going in. And even the relationship she was in, he questioned her. Are you sure you should do this? You're going to come against a lot of op opposition. Do you remember when she was in her boot camp? How many times did she want to go ring that bell and say, I'm done? Even the best of the best want to ring the bell. Even the best of the best still feel like they want to give up. Don't let anybody judge you for that. Don't let anybody judge you for the things that you question or the things that you feel in your heart. The ultimate thing is, if you take that to God, he will give you the power to not give up. He will give you the revelation and the wisdom that you need. That is what Pentecost Sunday is all about. It's coming into a new harvest, a new season. Listen, if you're going to have a new harvest, there has to be new seed. Do you under, okay, I just said something. It, a harvest is when you gather all the fruit from your labor, right? Right? What happens when you gather that harvest? The field is now empty, correct? What do you have to do? You have to have new seed. The Lord says he gives seed to the sower. He's going to, he gives it to the sower, not to the person that does this. So stop asking for money and all these things. If this is what you do, you don't give. Because God's not going to give to those that don't sow. All right? He gives seed to the sower. So your new land, I don't know how many of you have just left the old land that you were in. I don't know about you, but I know with my life, I've watched the Lord just rake, literally take the plow through the field and everything that I had worked for and, every, and in the Lord, not in the world, everything got pulled up and harvested. Okay, that goes there into that bucket. That You're not going to see that one, Gina. That goes with those people. Let it go. That harvest goes with that. Okay. And that one goes. And you're standing there like now the field is empty. That's the perfect place to be today. Because he's giving you new seed for the ground. Do you understand that? You are heirs to new land, to new property, to new ideas, to wisdom, to a new joy. Oh, but I already have joy. No, 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 no. He gives you more joy. He gives you more fruit. He gives you more peace. Do you understand? There's always more in the presence. If you've ever been in the presence of God, there's just more. Every time there's more, there's more, there's more. Right? It's never ending in his presence. But what happens if we get like-minded people together in ministries, in business, and all these like-minded people come together, there's nothing that we can't do. Go on YouTube, listen to my, my last teaching last Sunday, which somebody gave me a date. Uh, so last Sunday, and, um, and you're going to hear that message was on Genesis 11, and everybody building the tower. To, thank you. On June 1st, pick up that message because it's so powerful because everybody makes fun of all the people that built the tower to Babel and said, Oh, they're prideful. God tore it down. But listen, the word says that they were all in unity and in one language and there was nothing they couldn't do. So the Lord came and confused them. But what happens when God brings, uh, what happens when the Lord removes confusion from your midst? People that don't think like you. Now that's okay. Not everybody wants to do great things with the Lord. They're okay with just their small circle. Oh, that's fine. Praise God. Bless that circle. Bless what you're doing. That's awesome. But what this ministry is doing is raising up GI Janes and GI Joes, right? That's what we're called to do. So we're going to raise them up, but we're also raising them up to be healthy and to be wealthy. Well, not everybody wants to be wealthy. That's fine. If you can pay your own bills and you're happy, God bless you for real. Seriously, I'm not meaning that facetiously. God bless you. But if you want more so that you can do more 
and give more, right? That's what, so I want those kind of people with me. I love the ones that are okay with where they're at. I will love you. I love you, love you. But please don't call me and ask me to spend time with me. Don't ask me to go out to lunch. Don't ask me to hang out. Please. I need to be with people that are thinking like I'm thinking, that want to do great things, big things. Because what happens when you go into the gym and someone that doesn't maybe train as hard as you do, and they say, oh, let's just, let's just do two more sets and let's end. Isn't it easier to go down than it is to go up? Don't tell me it's not. Don't tell me it's not. All, that's why light can't fellowship with darkness. It's always easier to take the easier way out. Our flesh wants to give up. It's always, don't tell me it doesn't. It always wants to give up. But get people around you who will push you that one more rep, that one more hope, that one more dream, that one more dollar, right? Get with those kind of people. But don't make fun of the people that can't do it. Bless them. Pray for them. Encourage them. And then move on and gather the people that want to do great things. And those people are ones that have suffered. Now teach them how to walk in the glory of God. What does that mean? I am telling you right now, it's the tangible presence. It means it's kabod. It means a heavy presence of God. Don't, if you're sitting in a church where you literally have to ask, did the Holy Spirit even move in this place? I beg you to get out and run. I beg you, uh, but they teach a good word. Great. Please get in a church where you see the power of God moving. People are saying, my God, I didn't leave the same way I came in, right? That's what I'm asking you to do. Get to those kinds of ministries because listen, where we're going in the next three to six years, mark my words, in the next three to six years, if you don't get with people that think like you, you're not going to have the strength, the power, and the endurance to endure what this world is going to bring you. Look at it right now where it's going. If you're not on social media and you don't see it, then our eyes are blind. If you have children and you don't know what's going on right now, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to need power to fight what's coming at your children. Oh, I just pray for them every day. Well, that's just great. But are you having dreams for them? Is the presence of God invading your home where you can see they're on, you know, they're on Instagram and looking at nudies because someone's got a fitness picture, right? Oh, but it's just fitness. Get it the hell off of your phone right now. Quit following these people. I'm, I'm speaking to the masses right now because, oh, but I'm following for the fit. Ah, unfollow them. Look at my Instagram. I, I follow probably 15 people. I don't want their stuff on my line because it will pop on. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're going to walk in the anointing and the tangible presence of God. The more that you stick with him, the more that you get around people that think like you, have focus, focus like you, and are not double-minded. Is everybody getting this? Amen. Amen. So now, are we going to embrace, it's, it's truly up to us, it sincerely is. Are we going to embrace the thing or things that we're suffering right now? Yes. I will. I, I truly will. And anybody that knows a good portion of my story will understand that what I'm speaking, I've lived it. I've actually, I've walked through it and I didn't give up and I pressed through and in it, God will bless you if you do that. But I'm telling you, there's still going to be suffering, but get around people that can help you. Please get around those that understand it and then can walk you through, right? Everybody needs someone that has more wisdom than they do, right? In certain areas, we should all be doing this, helping each other. Not one person should always be up here. Well, I'm the one that hears from God all the time. You know what? If somebody's given their life to Jesus, they're going to hear from him. They may not identify how they're hearing him yet, right? So please be careful of pride. Please watch our own lives, our own hearts. And is that making sense? All right, let's close this up and um, let's pray for those watching on social media now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said it's dangerous to sit under the word of God. It's dangerous because Hebrews declares that your word, not my opinion, your word is sharper than any double-edged sword. It literally penetrates your heart. It penetrates your minds, your mind, your intent, right? It divides, divides bone and marrow. My God, it's a double-edged because it goes in 
but it has to come out. So that second edge has got to pull the stuff out. We're all going to be tested in the name of Jesus. When we're under the word, you're going to be tested in that. It all it has to come. Your commitment's going to be tested. So I speak the protection of the Lord over you. I cover your mind in Christ Jesus. I plead the blood over you. And I thank you that every demonic spirit, because come on, we wrestle against flesh and blood, not against flesh and blood, but the enemy is out there to try to take you down. It's not you. You're not failing because of you. There are forces, unseen forces that you do not see that are fighting you every day to steal your hope and your dreams. And in the name of Jesus, I declare the enemy is a liar. And we take back today on Pentecost Sunday, your harvest that was reaped by someone else. We command a hundredfold return into your hands in Jesus' name. And I declare and decree this day that you will be empowered to go through the trials and the sufferings. And the Lord shall not exacerbate his children. There is an ending and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I declare now you will see with your own eyes the ending to this trial. In the name of Jesus, we break off every yoke that is holding you down and tying your neck where you can't breathe. You can, the enemy's taking your voice. You can't even speak. You've just become secluded. And in Jesus' name, I say, come out. Come out and walk into the hope that he has for you. The inheritance that belongs to you because you are a child of God. So in Jesus' name, we speak this over you. Be whole. Amen and amen. Amen.